Did you learn anything about innovation today that sort of surprised you? No, not much. But you know, then I've been dealing with a lot of these friends for a long time. What would you say is the most... When you, when you think about what the biggest issue for companies in particular to stimulate innovation, what would you say it is? So first of all, today all innovation is multidisciplinary. All innovations require a lot of collaborations. And all innovations are happening faster than ever before. When I was a young engineer, you could invent something by yourself. Sitting in a lab, tweaking something. You can't do that today. Today you've got to really worry about, you know, larger team. So I think it's important to recognize that the nature of innovation has changed substantially. Is there any one piece of advice that you'd give to companies either based on what you brought with you today or something you learned today about how they could boost their innovation success rate? And, and it didn't go out of business because of what that? I would answer that a little differently. You know, as opposed to sort of giving specifics, I would say we all must recognize that today best brains in the world are busy solving problems of the rich who really don't have problems to solve. As a result, problems of the poor really don't get the right talent. I think there is a lot of business opportunity to solve problems of the poor, but it's not paying. Okay, so I want people to focus more on the bottom of the pyramid, whether it is in Mexico, India, China. Unfortunately, the way our systems are designed, if you get a good education, you are a good designer, you want to design better Cartier watch and not work on designing better slum. So I think my advice would be that don't look for too many innovations for the top of the pyramid. Look for a lot of innovations at the bottom of the pyramid. Okay, you're raising an issue that actually crossed my mind I mean, when, during one of the sessions which was if we believe that customers are increasingly the source of a lot of the best ideas, combining that with the thought you just expressed, do you think that it's possible that we could get, given the huge opportunity for innovating for the poor, and, and there's got to be money in it, of course do you think is. that some of those ideas may emerge among the poor themselves? Once you have a dialogue with them, yes. Once you have a dialogue with them. I'll give you one example. I'm on the board of the Institute of Design out of Chicago which is the largest design institute in the world. At one of the meetings, I told the director, Dean, Patrick Whitney, I said, Patrick, why don't you go to India and look at some slums? And he had never been to slums. He said, what do I do there? I said, just go there. So he went to Mumbai, went to this biggest slum called Dharavi, and he was absolutely shocked at the design challenge. He said, Sam, this is like a gold mine for designer. He said, I never thought like this. So he sent a bunch of kids with cameras taking pictures and designing, you know, ideas. And what really surprised me is they made an observation that in these slums, people spend a lot of space from limited space they have to store water. Because you have earthen pot, tin can, bucket. Okay. So some bright young American boy came up with the idea of plastic bag that you can hang to store water. Very interesting idea. It never occurred to somebody there because nobody really looked at their problems. I'm sure there are tons of examples like this. You know, Anything else that you've been thinking about innovation that, you know, we really should focus in on? Any any big, big idea? I think there is another big idea that I'd like to share with you since I know you. I wasn't planning to talk about it. Is I think we have this whole consumption model which says if in U.S. shopping season is very good during Thanksgiving, Chinese and Indians are happy because everybody is watching how U.S. spends money. I think that model is not sustainable anymore. It had its time. 
we need to really think about a new model for the world which doesn't depend on us economy us growth we had our time and we should be really you know big enough to say hey it's time to look at the rest of the world it is time to prepare a plan for africa it's a time to prepare a plan for poor in latin america poor in asia because it is in our interest to have prosperity for others we can't have all the prosperity i think we have reached a limit to some extent so we may have to be happy with economy that is not growing more than 0% or something for a while i think we need to create new model and this is needed because i think internet mobile communication has changed the world completely a little kid sitting in india now can go visit guggenheim museum which he had never been to before so his aspirations have gone up yeah. so i think it's it's in our interest to create a new model of development are you confident that innovation is going to happen sufficiently to solve the problems of the world to you know reduce the likelihood that that disparity between the rich and the poor so. creates so. huge conflict i think there is going to be fair amount of innovations all over the world because of the access information is accessible okay, so little guy in the village who had never thought of solving problem now understands how to solve a problem okay, plus he wants what he sees on the other side of the screen so i think we will see lot of innovations so far the innovation has also been fueled by defense spending if you look at the last 50 years of innovation almost all of the major innovations have come from the us whether it is transistor software laser satellite microchips you can name 10 more somebody needs to ask a question why <clears throat> i think defense based innovation has given us this prosperity it is time to look at innovations based on human development i think it's going to come from biotech stem cell research we need better food we need agricultural technology i think it technology has really given us connectivity globally if i look at the last 50 years of accomplishments on one hand i see decolonization democratization and communication we are all connected it really doesn't matter who we are anymore you know we feel closer to other part of the world because of connectivity now the challenge is to really relook at the developmental model saying today in spite of all this great technology great scientists great minds we still have poverty war we still have you know hunger we have cut our forest our animals are no longer there so it's time to relook at and say hey let's go back to basics can we make world more green can we bring some of our species back i think we have the talent i have great faith in the talent i'm glad you're optimistic i hope i i try to share that i go back and forth <clears throat> but i think basically i'm optimistic i'm optimistic i mean i there's a lot of obstacles and also there are a lot of good people around at the end of the day i find there are a lot of good human beings around in all parts of the world maybe small number but they're good people you know when i meet professors here or at harvard or at at oxford they're all good guys they want to do something for the humanity not that everybody is interested in immediate gains there are people who want to give to the society they don't know how to do it so we got to create a paradigm which is a different paradigm than this innovation of productivity efficiency cost reduction more profit more corporate products you know that's what i would like to really focus on well, that's good we could talk about this forever but i guess we don't need to put it all on the camera thanks david that's great.